Please, please. Should okay. it be sort of crummy? <laughs> okay, that's I'm what will. you're about to make it. I'm gonna do like a small, tiny demo on washes. Um, I love doing washes. I love trying to figure out different ways to do things. Is that um, like when the people come around with the carpet cleaning trucks, and they do one room? Half a carpet, and they're like, "Here you go." Sell you the rest. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, "Oh, it's three hundred dollars plus four hundred dollars taxes on product or something crazy." Okay. So, um, every time, out. every time I build a model or every time I, I start to finish it, I always try different ways to do things, and I'm always trying new things. And it's it's one of the things I, I love about the hobby is you could always learn something new from somebody else. Um, perfect example is is the three models I have here. Uh, this this is a chieftain from Take Home Great Kit. I'm gonna do my thing up there too so I don't have to leave but uh, this is out of the box the only thing added was the stuff here and it's resin and uh, and some metal poles and stuff like that I just you know the, the pictures they always have them so I put it on there um, I did this a lot differently than uh, most kits is I'm using uh, AK uh, cursed earth for the dirt and the only thing I've done is this in the rear end and her end's a little lighter than what I want it to be but when I first started this, it was dark coated, <laughs> and I added all the grime and stuff like that. And then I gloss coated it, and then I added more so I could get some little streaking, as you can see. Now this is barely the beginning. You know, the way you guys see how I model, I mean, my models do not look the same from month to month if it ever finish. So, and another another cool thing, this. Uh, so I go there. I'm doing that with that on this. So this is another thing I, I've picked up too. Um, so <coughs> the washes that I've been doing on, I was using uh, OE, OIF, OEF, it's kind of a brown wash. Okay? And as you can tell on most places, I, I did a, a general overview of stuff. And it's, I'm always, I always do pin washes. I never do overall washes. It's just not the way I do things. Um, a lot of people will do the whole coverage and then clean it up with a Q-tip or something. That's cool, hey, whatever floats your boat. Um, so you when notice, you say pin wash, you're talking about yeah, I'm just doing, and, and that's what right? I'm going to do on this thing. I'm going to show okay. you exactly how okay. to do that. So there, a lot of people do overall washes. <coughs> Maybe they'll tint the whole thing. I don't. Do that. It's just not. That's not the way I do things. So, but if you do that, more power to you. I mean, I've seen that absolutely amazing. There's a lot of guys who know they do it, and they're absolutely amazing. Just go on Facebook. They're everywhere. Um, and the perfect example is uh, I've learned this thing too. Is if you look at the front of this. Um, so I use I use this wash. You can see where it's like a lot lighter in certain places. I use that, and then I use this NATO wash over the top, and I split it kind of in the center, so you can see how lighter it is on this side, and then how darker it is on this, as you can tell on the you know on the thing. So that's that's one thing I'm I'm doing now. I always try to do different colors and different things, and, and the darker colors you <coughs> use, the more darker browns, the darker just darker colors. When it dries up, it looks more winter, like just kind of grimy that thing and then the lighter colors you use it tends to be more summery I mean it just kind of it's one of those eye things um, so on this I'm, I'm doing this as like a, a April May time frame for for the vehicle it's May April 1945 I used uh, the very beginning of this I used uh, winter drinking grime and it kind of blends in with with the the camouflage a little bit but you can see where it's picked up around the details and stuff in little areas so I'm, what I'm going to show you on his is how I do some of this on this, and I'm going to do a little bit on that, and a little bit on this with different colors so you can see how you get different things with that. Now, you don't have to use these. I love them because why I hate mixing paints or washes to get a certain color. So these are easy to use. They're enamel, so they stink. That's the down, downside of it. But mm -hmm. I, I swear by them. I love them. They work great for me. Um, it's not for everybody. I mean, there's acrylic ones, too. I'm not sure how to use those because I've never used them before, but uh, I've been using these since they came out, and I've, I either of that or I use oil paints. You know, I, I break down oil paints with thinner. Um, there's two kinds of thinner. You could use regular, you know, thinner, or you could use white spirit. White spirit is more aggressive than thinner. Um, I use it because I'm I just kind of get kind of crazy on my things, and I like how it works compared to thinner. And that's again, it's it all comes down to personal preference. Um, but I'm going to start on this. Now you're I'm supposed to do, seal these, right, before you go the, Okay, the best thing to do, I mean, I'm, I, I, I've kind of stretched myself out on things because I want to do try new things. The best thing to do if you want to get a really good wash, with, with AK, the best thing to do is do like a satin finish instead of a gloss finish. Satin works really well with, with AK stuff. That's okay. what's, me, what's on the, the other paint? hand, what's that? What's the paint? Oh, it doesn't I mean, matter. If, if you're using white spirit, do you need to make sure you're seal using it. acrylic paint? Seal, seal it. it. Seal it. With an acrylic. You can seal it with anything you want. I mean, here's a perfect example, okay? Blacker and this, this paint, this model right here, 
the base coat is black enamel um, auto primer, right? Okay. To my acrylics over the top. Then I used uh, Future. I glossed it okay. so I could put the decals on. Yeah. And then I sprayed Tamaya flat coat over it. Okay, this was okay. done with Future. That's why I was. Yeah. Doing. So uh, you you always want a barrier between any time you wanted to start doing washes or whatever. You always want a barrier because it protects on your undercoat. Future, do you just use it straight out of the bottle? I use it straight out of the bottle. Airbrush. What? Airbrush. What do you use to clean your brush? Out mm -hmm. of your uh, water. 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 I use, sometimes water. I use. No. Window. Cleaner. Me. Window. Unlike everybody paint. else, I have my uh, airbrushes have blown seals. So if you try to use my airbrush, you'd probably make a gigantic mess because you don't <laughs> the, you don't want to airbrush the way I airbrush. I'm not the guy to stand by and do that. So when when I go to like Eric Gorsky's house or I work you know with Tony Fro, Fro mm -hmm. and their airbrushes are pristine to work, it takes me a couple minutes to figure out like oh this spray's really nice because mine just blows air until I start painting. So it's kind of a crazy concoction mm -hmm. idea. We on the bottle for stripping it off a floor. It'll tell you to use vinegar water. Oh, okay. Course, you just, Windex I use, also has WD-40 uh, right. in it. Windex yeah, I use. Well, I won't use Windex. What you, I do is I go to Walmart or something, you buy the jug of windshield washer, the blue one, because that has uh, wood grain alcohol in it. Works great. And the, the only problem when, yeah. you, when you do stuff, when you Especially use that stuff, Friday night. the seals will dry up. Okay, you want to spray it back through with water and you want to make sure it's clean up, because if you don't, you get what I get, which is blown seals. And they cost, I don't know how much it costs to fix because I'm lazy and I don't want to pay for they're them. Cheap. They work. So they're, they're it's cheap. like, yeah. I just learned how to do it. Yeah, so it's just, <laughs> I'm comfortable with the way I airbrush, so that's that's that. Um, but like I said, I all of this is based on an enamel base with acrylics on top, but you have to seal it. That's the seal, thing. Seal the layers. Because if not, I mean, I wish I could, I airbrush over where I didn't, and I used just regular I, uh, Tamiya thinner. I was, yeah. I was airbrushing and I dropped the spot and it was black. You could, it just took the paint right off the top of it. Yeah. So, but so you ha you have to because if you don't, your paint's going to go all over the place. You know, and it's going to be a mess. And then right. what are you add. putting over the future? Nothing. Well, uh, you, he, he's going to do, do his do is, weathering over the future. Like yeah, you, oh, you yeah, spray yeah. your your, yes, your future. So I thought you said something else. Yeah, and then and then after then when you're done, you dull coat it. And I used uh, Tamiya dull coat little. It's like two bucks for a little right. bottle. Right. And that's what that is. It's abs I freaking love it now. I mean, mm. you spray it right out. I think it's really thick. We have sprays gorgeously, and, and then all you got to do is put a little bit of tomato lacquer thinner in it, and it cleans it up. So it works out pretty good. Um, but let me let me get on this. I'm going to show a little bit since he gloss coated this with Future. I'm going to do like this area right here, um, and this with this, and then I'm going to go to this and do a little bit of dust just to bring so how I do the dust and so I can blend stuff in. And then I'm going to do a little bit uh, up the front so you can actually really see it on that one quicker thing. So last time I did this was a couple years ago. And the model I did was a Centaur. It was dark. And you, it was like me just moving a brush around on, on, on nothing. So so here I go with this. Um, like I said, you want to make sure this mix. It's enamel so everything settles. And it's always going to settle. So you got to keep working on it. So the, the easiest way to do it, and again, this is, this is my way. I mean, you pick your own way to do things. You know, just you know, do your own thing. So... So I get plenty on my brush, okay, and I'm going to, all I'm going to do is, yeah, you got some good stuff on here. So, so I just, that's all I did, you just draw a line on there. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to do anything, okay. Because there, there's a lot of people that are, you know, pristine, and you could take this, the coolest thing you can do with this is you could take the thinner, get one of those artist trays. You're out of frame now, come on. It's okay, my hands are still here, see it? <laughs> um, get an artist tray, right? And you can put a little bit of thinner, clean thinner, in one, and then do, put a little bit of this in there and put mix it with thinner. So you have a wash, you have a clean brush, wash, and stuff. The best, the best way to see how this stuff works really well is Adam Wilder's videos on YouTube. He does a complete weathering job on a KV-1 tank. And it's absolutely stunning how he goes through. He, he breaks down every video, is 15 minutes long, he breaks down how to do everything I'm doing. Okay, so, and I always use the lid. I almost never go in there because it's just, that's just me, so. And then uh, and I'm going to do kind of like the whole thing because it's kind of laying there. So you, you don't have to be perfect or anything, right? That's that's the whole point. I'm just going to do this whole thing. I'm going to stick it right there. I'll do the corner. So I'm still in focus? Yep. You're doing fine. You're always fuzzy. It's okay. <laughs> I'll do the little parts. Just though. like Dave's slippers. Always fuzzy. <laughs> So, flippers. <laughs> so I'm gonna let that sit. So you should always let it sit for a couple minutes, 
Okay. I mean, it's it's not one of those things that you, you know. Put it in the box. You know, but just just let it sit, let it do what it needs to do, or whatever the deal is. Um, I always clean, like just wipe the brush. And I have one of these that's kind of dirty, and I use this most for localized washes, and then you know, so and that's all I do right there. So this, because I want, I'm going to do dust on the on the rear plate. You can see, like the way I airbrush is whatever weathering I'm doing, my airbrush always plays the first point part in, in weathering, okay? So I always do a dust coat, like a really light dust look coat. At his, look at his shadows on his tarp. Look how it, how pronounced it is on yeah. the video. What the f That's really um, nice. It's no, really so, nice, Will. Like every, every one of these, like every model I build, I always do a, a black base coat. I, it's just me. You don't have to. You could paint the model. You use primers. You don't have to use primers. Just whatever you're comfortable with, with do it. But I'll tell you, just try something. Try something new. Try something different. And if it works, it does. If it doesn't, you know, go back to your own way of doing things. So on this, if you notice, there's a lot of, you can see where it's like blended or there's like, it looks like there's almost like a layer of dust. I airbrushed that. That's my base for what, where I'm going to put my weathering or my washes. So I could kind of build up a layer. And the biggest thing about washes is that you want to do everything in layers. Okay, these, these are not magic in a bottle. You know, it's not like, oh, I got this. I'm going to put it on there and it's going to look beautiful. It doesn't, this stuff doesn't work that way. Nothing works. You all know that you build models. They have fairy dust in it. Yeah, but people have that idea <laughs> that that's, that's what you do and you just don't. It doesn't work that way. So you got to work with it. So, um, so I'm going to put this away because I tend to knock these over like you wouldn't believe. Um, but so I'm going to do right in this little area and hopefully this stuff works better. So, but it's the biggest thing that, about this is layers. Everything I'm doing, I'm going to add another probably four or five different layers. So I'm, going to, I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing, a couple more washes with different colors. You want to bring depth to whatever you're, you're working on. So if you just, you know, you, you can paint it one thing and then leave it alone. Hey, if that's you're comfortable with, that's what you like, go for it. You know, I didn't, and, you know, there's no. So all I'm doing, I'm just going to do this one side because that's. Do you use a special brush? What kind of brush is that? No, this is a crappy uh, Hobby Boss or Hobby Boss, Hobby Lobby. You know, you go in there and you get brushes that are like five bucks for like eight of them or whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's what I use. Because one, they're, you could use them and they fall, whatever, they fall apart. It's mean. Now, when it comes to scratches and doing all that stuff, I'm telling you right now, if you want to get into that, all the detail, you know how they do and you see on the magazines, <laughs> Windsor Newton, Triple right. Zero. Or Tamiya does an HD, but they're like fifteen to twenty-two dollars a piece. The difference between those brushes and crappy brushes you have in store is I've, I have a Windsor Newton Triple Zero that I've had for seventeen years, and it hasn't lost its point. So that brush is constantly overdone. I have a Tamiya brush, the same thing, and it has never lost its point. You take care of it, it's going to work for you. I mean, it's just like anything else. You don't use garbage over and over again. It's going to cost. You keep buying brushes, it's going to add up to the same price as that sooner or later. Right. So, um, but yeah. So see, all I did. All I did was add this right there. That's all I did. Okay, you know, and then since this is already uh, flat coated, it's going to be. I, I need to work on it a little quicker than. than so I would you basically this. work in one little section. Yeah, I always do. Time. I don't ever go. I do. One, I always do one section, and you look at it kind of okay. And the thing is, whenever you get done with something, put it aside. Go do something. Come back in a couple of days. Look at it. If it's, if you like where it's at, then do something else. So. The guy you mentioned earlier, isn't that the, the one you put on YouTube where he was doing the, um, the PAC 44 or 72 or something I'm like that? I'm not sure, but whatever. And you use a sponge. Yeah, you could use a sponge. You could use yeah. all kinds of different things. It was, it was an anti-tank gun. I can't remember what size it was. You know, It's one of those German anti-tank guns. So on this, you want to get to where the, the, the thinner's almost all gone Big. off the brush? Okay. Real big? Sorry? You want to get where the thinner is almost all off the brush. You don't want to okay. drown the area because it just gets rid of everything. Right. So all I'm going to do is I'm just blending it in. Okay. And you want you want it to kind of come out a little bit. I know this is kind of a. You know, and, and you got to keep freaking working it. And it gets. It gets worse, you know, the, the different kind of things that you use. Some of it, again, it's, it's one of those things where it's, um,
and these brushes you don't need uh, you don't need like super duper brushes. It's okay if it falls apart because why you're just doing wash, you're not doing any amazing, amazing paint jobs on it or anything. And you while you're doing to, this, what are you trying to replicate there? Dust, dust. And uh, the biggest thing is if if you if you can't you know if you're looking at models and you're like okay well I, I'm not sure about that. Easiest thing to do we all have computers or most of us do reference pictures. Go look at pictures of real vehicles. Go drive down the street look at tractors or or trucks or your car after a rainstorm and, it, and the sun comes out you're always going to get dust on something. Dust connects to everything. So. Um, But yeah, you just wanna you wanna keep working it. And like I said, this is just this is just one of the steps. I mean, you, most of you know I, I my steps are take you know forever. Years, years. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm just like sometimes I'll get fed up with it and I'll put it aside for you know three months, six months or the deal. Then I'll come back and we're like, okay, I can work on this again, you know. But. Uh, You know what I do? I do mine. I, I use Q-tips. Is there a what's the the main difference between the two? I mean, if that's what you want to use. I mean, yeah. occasionally it, it depends on. I've used Q-tips. Um, I, I did a Tie Fighter, and because it has such flat places and all the panel lines are engraved, I use Q-tips, and I just I, you only go one direction with the Q-tip. It don't go all over the place because that means it smears and then you get it. What you want to do is you want to keep going the same direction. So all it does is stay inside all the depression areas. But like dip it, dip it in a thinner. Yeah. Okay. And then make sure it's not like, in, you know, dip it and wipe it in the whole thing and then just go one direction. You don't want to go anything. So, yeah, that's, so that's just one little tiny area. And then, then I'll go back through when after it dries and I might add a couple little scratches in there on the on the bolt heads or whatever the deal is and then I might do another dark wash just in the in like in the corner or something like that so when you look at it my biggest thing is this when I when I look at people's models like when I used to judge what the deal is I would always look at one little tiny section of a model right and and just just look at it and see all the detail then I'll go to another section and look at that section and I want to see differences I want to see you know shadows and highlights or where the deal is like the guy actually took the time to do things Instead of just you know, like, I'm going to do everything's the same color all the way across. Because if you look at anything that's real, it's never like that. Nothing is ever like that. The sun shining on, shadows, whatever's going to play the game is, is going to be playing the game. So, so, that's, so that's done in that little tiny spot. I'm <laughs> sorry.